Scottish kingship under James III uh, should have been much more straightforward in terms of what he inherited uh, than the inheritance of either his grandfather or his father. James III gets a bad press because of what are his, his perceived failings as a king. Certainly in the way I've imagined him, he's the most modern in that his dilemmas are as much internal as external. Um, and I think he was, without doubt, obviously all the kings were speculating about the nature of their personality, but I think he was with, without doubt probably the most conflicted and the most difficult. And I think he also was clearly quite a self-centred, narcissistic personality. What's really fascinating about that is it's often caused by um, a young child who's had an obsessive parent who has made them feel like the centre of the universe and has then left them, abandoned them, died, which is James, James III's story. And then you see the whole world as an extension of your own ego. I mean, he can be wonderfully charming and, and, and he has a wonderful use of rhetoric when he wants to. And, He's very descriptive and poetic and, and it can be very loving and um, all these things that makes Margaret's job a lot harder because she's completely torn between staying with this man who can be all those angelic things but suddenly can turn on a whim and become very, very nasty and vindictive and horrible with a foul mouth. He obviously did incite serious rebellion. He seriously annoyed people and eventually, you know, Scotland was destroyed very briefly by civil war. But that was a, a, a theme that repeated throughout his reign. It, there was there were periods of kind of like semi-civil war. However, he seemed to recover from them. If you look at it, James III is something of a survivor. When he comes to the throne. The Lancastrians are still in power in England, just. Uh, then you have the entire Yorkist dynasty, three kings in England, ending of course bloodily with Richard III, uh, and in come the Tudors. And James III is still there at the start of Henry Tudor's reign and uh, apparently getting on famously with him, but not with his own people. <laughs> And this is really, I think, what James's fatal flaw is. But at the same, point, same time, because there's no division between who he is and who someone else is, he can be extraordinarily captivating and charismatic and feel like you are his world when he's talking to you. So he is a remarkable, extraordinary person. But if anyone says no to them, they can fly into a narcissistic rage and they do not understand why the world might say no to them. Uh, James III can quite easily just drop into any emotion possible, in the middle of any emotion. And I think that's definitely the way he is. And no one's sure whether he's being deliberate, deliberately, no one's sure whether he's being deliberately manipulative or if it's just his nature. And that's just what you either live with or, or leave, um, and if you leave you might get your head chopped off.